Hi, I'm Ning Shiyao. Today, I'm going to present my research work on the topic of how to resolve contentions through real-time control and scheduling for cyber-physical human system. And this work is done together with Dr. Fu Ming Zhang and Dr. Michael Milosov from Louisiana State University. In cyber-physical system, shared resources are widely used to increase modularity and flexibility. However, the shared resource have its own problem, which is limited capacity. And because of this limitation, when multiple systems need to access a shared resource, at the same time, contention occurs. Contention will cause all different kinds of problems, such as collision, backage job, time delay, and this traffic deadlock here. So contention is a generic problem whenever we consider using the shared resource. To resolve contentions, usually a scheduling mechanism is needed to determine which task should be handled first. And the scheduling is normally done by assigning priorities to each system. And the system with highest priority wins the computation to the shared resource when contention occurs. And for some applications, such scheduling and the priority assignment are crucial. Here is a vivid example of that. In this trick, this guy needs to spin all the seven plays spinning at the same time. So he is a shared resource here. And since each system here is super unstable, making the right decision on which plate to spin first will be essential to his job. And same things occurs in industry also. Bad scheduling can dramatically degrade the control performance. And in a very extreme case, bad scheduling may even destroy the stability of the whole system, no matter what kind of control that we use, try to compensate for it. So in those applications, we need to consider determining both scheduling and the control at the same time. And this is a problem of control and the scheduling co-design. And this is the general structure of this co-design problem. We consider a total number of n system, which will have a recurring request to use a shared resource to complete certain control task. And the shared resource can be general. It can represent different applications. Uh, in the shared resource, we assume there is a scheduler that assign priorities to resolve contention and the priority takes an integer value and can be time varying. The overall goal of the co-design problem is to determine priority assignment P and control U at the same time, such that the overall control performance degradation caused by contention can be minimized. And this problem turns out to be very difficult because it is a mixed integer optimization that is nonlinear and non-convex and have the infinite dimension search space. And my contribution is that I'm able to find a general method to solve this difficult problem. So we develop a new method that is able to solve the co-design problem in real time. And we call this method contention resolving model predictive control. We can theoretically prove that the solution obtained by contention resolving MPC is optimal to the, essential, uh, to the original scheduling and control code design problem. And the method we develop has also been verified in several real life applications, such as intersect, uh, inter traffic intersection scheduling and the human and the multi robot collaboration system. So if you are interested, in this work, please visit my poster and we can have more discussion. Thank you. Hello, everyone. In this video, we are presenting stain particle filtering. We aim to solve nonlinear filtering problem. XT is the unknown hidden state. We can get access to the observation ZT. Capital ZT is all the observations until time T. And our target is to estimate the hidden state XT given all the observation history Z1 to ZT, which is formally PXT given capital ZT. SIR is a fundamental particle filter a method to solve nonlinear filtering. It approximates the posterior with particles. It firstly predicts particles, then updates their weights. It may resemble after several iterations, then it loops as the forward. The tool we use to solve the problem is stain variational gradient descent. 
It gradually transforms samples from an arbitrary initial distribution Q0 to samples of a target distribution Q. In iteration, xl plus 1 equals to xl plus epsilon phi xl. Phi x is like a direction of the transforming, and the epsilon l is the step size. Notice that in this method, we only carry gradient of log q. So the normalization constant in the denominator of q is not important at all. This property makes it ideal to deal with our target distribution, which is obtained by Bayesian inference. Based on the SVGD, we propose two algorithms to sample from posterior distribution Pxt plus 1 given Zt plus 1. By Bayesian rule, we get the posterior formula. In the right-hand side, however, this integral is intractable. We propose to use the empirical approximation by replacing the integral with the summation, so we can use SVGD to sample from posterior easily. This is how algorithm 1 works. Algorithm 2 is an extension of algorithm 1 by approximating posterior of xt in a window. In practice, choosing the proper window length t is a trade-off. When t equals to 1, we're performing SVGD in a lower dimension. Remember, for optimization, the dimension of algorithm 2 is t times the dimension of algorithm 1. But by algorithm 2, we can take advantage of more observations and thus decrease the error. These two examples show exactly this trade-off. But both algorithms perform better or on par with SIR. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening. This poster proposes joint input state estimation through a so-called finite input covariance with input updating estimator, also termed FICIU. Consider a stochastic dynamic system, such as an airplane, a building, a robot, or a bridge, modeled in state-based form. Input state estimation is concerned with designing an estimator that will take in your noisy output measurements Y along with the state-space model of your system to provide you with accurate and reliable estimates of the inputs and the states in the case where they cannot be measured directly. In a substantial portion of the literature, the input is given a zero mean Gaussian white noise distribution with some defined covariance matrix that is not known a priori. The incorrect choice of the former can deteriorate the quality of the estimates and may lead to divergence from true values. For this reason, the proposed FICIU estimator is designed by implementing an online recursive input covariance update routine to the finite input covariance estimator, or FIC, presented in this paper here. The input is modeled as a zero-mean white Gaussian noise distribution with a time-varying input covariance matrix. Furthermore, this input covariance matrix is assigned an inverse Wuchart or IW distribution. Notice that the IW distribution is parameterized by a matrix parameter omega and a scalar parameter rho. By assigning these menstruant distributions, we can leverage Bayesian conjugacy to adaptively update the input covariance matrix in a recursive manner, reducing the reliance on the initial uncertain input covariance value. The algorithm consists of measurement updates, where the input and states are updated based on the acquired sensor measurements, and time updates, where the model is used to update the input and state estimates. Notice the, the input covariance matrix is now time varying and updated recursively at each time step k by using the mode of the IW distribution and its updated parameters. The scalar parameter raw is, is revised by adding one to the prior value with each new observation. The matrix parameter omega requires a Gaussian white noise sample. For that purpose, we propose using the difference between the current estimate and the time updated prior. To evaluate the performance of the proposed estimator, the linear time invariant dynamical system used is a two-story shear frame structure shown here, subject to unknown ground excitation. The simulated noisy acceleration output measurements are assumed to be available at the two floors and are used to estimate the unknown input as well as the displacement and the velocity at the two floors. The figures show the estimation time history of the input and displacement using both the FIC and the proposed FICIU estimators for an initialized value of sigma u equal 10 that is far from the ideal value. 
The FICIU can adequately track the true values for the entire time history, whereas the estimates from the FICI estimator begin to diverge away from the true value and are affected by low frequency drift. To compare and quantify the accuracy of the estimators, we compute the root mean square error shown here. The estimators are initialized for different values of sigma u, and the estimation is performed for each value. The RMS errors are then computed using the entire estimated time history. The figure shows that the FICIU estimator can achieve a smaller RMS error for a larger range of initialized values. Finally, for a white noise input with constant covariance value, we visualize the adaptive input covariance updated by the FICIU for three cases, one where the predefined input covariance value is overdetermined, one where it is underdetermined, and one where it is exact. It can be seen that the FICIU can identify the true input covariance values within a few iterations only for all cases. Greetings, my name is Ranyu Kai, and it's a pleasure to present to you linearization of non-Lipschitz neighborhood in extended common filters. My mentor is Professor Eric Ferris, whose guidance and contribution I cannot appreciate more. First of all, the term Lipschitz is mostly used in the phrase Lipschitz continuity. And it is defined for a function such that there exists a positive real constant k such that for all x1 and x2, the inequality here holds. In other words, for differentiable functions, the first derivative of the function stays finite. Now, now Lipschitz is the lack of this property. For example, in the graph below, y equal to x to the third power, by the way, contains a non-Lipschitz neighborhood at around x equal to zero. And this lack of the property introduces inconveniences when solving differential equations due to the existence and uniqueness theorem. For instance, this differential equation with the initial condition of zero, zero will have two different solutions as listed right here. Non-Lipschitz neighborhood can also cause problems in extended common filters. Common filtering is a widely used algorithm to produce estimates of unknown variables in linear systems. While extended common filtering applies the same technique to nonlinear systems by linearizing the estimated trajectory in real time. Due to the linearization, it is not an optimal algorithm I won't go into the details here, but I hope the flowchart on the right can help you recall or have a general idea of its working. Note that HK and AK in the diagram are Jacobian matrices. This is where the problem can occur. When either function H or F or both contains one or more non lipschitz neighborhoods, the consequence of the problem is crashing computer programs due to data overflow. During my research, a method is found to deal with this problem at a small cost. That is to perform a linearization around the non-Lipschitz neighborhood. However, linearization is not in the traditional sense of taking the first term of Taylor polynomial. Instead, connecting, the, connecting two distant points to creating to create a finite slope. Of course, the two points are not too distant, but distant enough to create a finite slope. Of course, modifying the original function will introduce a degree of inaccuracy in the filter results. Further investigating that, I constructed a one-dimensional extended common filter example to show the difference before and after. Notice the two large outliers in the original estimation. They are caused by processing near the non-Lipschitz neighborhood. If the value of estimation happens to be exactly at zero at any time, the computer will crash and the filter will stop working. Comparing the before and after results, the accuracy of the estimation is mostly preserved. And you can find more details, especially regarding to the implementation of my example in my poster. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hello everyone, I'm Christian Janos and I am here to present the poster titled Safety from Fast in the Loop Reachability with Application to UAVs. 
So unmanned aerial vehicles have become increasingly accessible over the past decade. Operating such vehicles near civilians and property can be quite dangerous, emphasizing the need for verifiable safety of highly dynamic systems such as UAVs. So one attractive approach to verify safety is to filter a potentially unsafe controller at runtime. This approach is referred to in literature as runtime assurance or active set and variance filtering. In this work, we leverage control barrier functions to adjust control actions in a minimally invasive way while ensuring forward and variance of a predefined safe subset of the safe space. So before we dive into the main algorithm, we begin by introducing mixed monotone systems theory. So a monotone dynamical system falls into a class of dynamical systems where trajectories evolve with respect to a partial order of the states. A system is said to be mixed monotone if it can be decomposed into increasing and decreasing components via a decomposition function D. This, this allows us to construct an embedding system that turns out to be useful for approximating the reachable set. Computing reachable sets numerically at runtime is difficult to do in general, especially so for multi-rotors that exhibit fast rotational dynamics and require computation computations online. Now for the main algorithm, we consider its general form the non-deterministic dynamical system shown, given a backup controller UB that renders robustly forward invariant a safe uh, backup subregion SB for some continuously differentiable and concave H, and assume the closed loop backup dynamics are mixed monotone with respect to D. We use a numerically stable continuously differentiable soft min function known as the log sum exponential. It approximates min s for a set of points in the set, in the set s. So we denote the log sum exponential over a set of evaluations of a barrier function h on the corners of a hyper rectangle A by LSEH of A. Uh, the log sum exponential provides a differentiable relaxation and allows us to define gamma, where this phi of ET is the particular state of the embedding system at time t with the initial state x. We then define psi at the supremum as the supremum of gamma within the prediction horizon. We can also define the derivative of psi with respect to x. So the derivative of phi in the right hand side is determined by via distance sensitivity analysis where t star is the time achieving the supremum in the right hand side uh, of the definition from uh, phi of x. We can now construct an optimization problem to solve for u star. Nominally, the program will act as a feed-through for a primary controller unless the control input violates the CBF-based constraint. We apply this theory to two multi-rotors fixed to the YZ plane. The multi-rotors are commanded via a uh, primary controller that is intentionally designed to have a collision at y equals zero and an altitude of two meters. So we construct the backup controller essentially as a, a two-mass uh, spring, uh, nonlinear spring system, and that'll act as a, a backup controller. So essentially, um, this equilibrium point um, is this displacement, uh, predefined displacement um, between the quadrators. In the first plot, we illustrate trajectories in the two states defined as displacement between the multi rotors in the y and z axes, known as delta x or delta y and delta z. In black we have the actual directory, in red we have the directories of the embedding system for a prediction horizon of five seconds from the current state. The set shown in green is the backup subregion. The blue set is the safe region whereby the component uh, complement is the unsafe set. The red set illustrated as a rectangle is the approximation of the reachable set of the system at the maximizing time t star. We see that the system is allowed to evolve outside of the safe subregion if there is some time t in the embedding trajectory prediction horizon that is fully contained in the safe subregion. Illustrations are shown for the trajectories in the position coordinates um, from MATLAB plots and the gazebo simulation this is run on. Uh, this is the third plot on the right. We use a Jetson Nano to act as a main computer running the algorithm and is configured to run as a hardware in the loop experiment. We also illustrate the desired control action of the primary controller in blue versus the output of our algorithm in orange. As you can see, the algorithm acts as a feed-through while the reachable set is within, is well within the safe subregion. 
as it approaches the boundary of the safe subregion, or in other words, the corridors deviate from their safe displacement distance, then the algorithm outputs a different control action to ensure safety. We also tabulate the comp computation times of important parts of the algorithm. As you can see, we are capable of computing reachable sets and run an optimization program over the barrier constraints at 100 hertz. So that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you. Hello, my poster topic is Space Learning Model Predictive Control for Precise Aware Source Thinking. The problem of sourcing, uh, precise aware source thinking is inspired by the problem of source thinking and the problem of optimal target search. The objective of source thinking is to locate the source of an unknown signal field, which is to find the global maximizer of the source field. And the objective of optimal target search is to find an allocation of search effort in the workspace that maximize the probability of detection a target subject to certain constraints on the search effort. Combining those two objectives, we propose the precise aware source thinking problem. The objective is to maximize the search precise reward along the trajectory, whose terminal condition is given as a maximizer of the source, source signal field. We propose to solve this precise aware source thinking problem by base learning MPC. Base learning MPC is a two-step iterative optimization framework. As the first step, the robot will take the measurement of the signal field and update the posterior distribution of the source location by basin estimation. And as the second step, the robot will plan an optimal trajectory to reach to the source. We incorporate the terminal constraint of the original precise aware source thinking problem into the objective function and propose the learning-based MPC problem. The learning-based MPC problem will be solved by the scenario tree search and the planning horizon is determined by the entropy of the source location distribution. We analyze our consistency and the convergence of our proposed algorithm. For basic consistency, the estimated distribution of the source location will converge to the true source location distribution with probability one. And for the convergence, the robot movement controlled by the solution of the MPC problem will eventually converge to the true source location in finite time. We compared our proposed precise aware source thinking algorithm with the expected rate algorithm by the simulation results. According to the simulation results, our proposed precise aware algorithm will achieve better performance in both the scenario with wind and with wind and our proposed algorithm could greatly reduce the number of measurements that's needed, but still achieve the near optimal solution for the trajectory length. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nathan Glazer, and I will be presenting Multi-Agent Perception and Planning via Learned Cost Map Exchange. I've been working on this project in the Robo8750 class under the direction of Dr. Jolt Kira and Dr. Evangelos Theodoro. Collision-free navigation is an important capability for self-driving vehicles. Significant time and energy have gone into ensuring that individual autonomous vehicles can move safely through an environment. Our project explores three upcoming research trends for collision-free navigation. The first trend relates to learnability. Can we devise a neural network architecture that can learn how to navigate challenging situations purely by observing human experts. The second trend relates to interpretability. Can we break apart the black box of deep learning by producing interpretable outputs? And the third trend relates to connected vehicle collaboration. Does communication improve performance, especially during dicey situations such as navigating a busy intersection? To answer these questions, we explore the task of collision-free intersection planning. Namely, given global state estimation, local perception, and bandwidth-limited communication, 
a group of multiple autonomous vehicles must plan a sequence of actions that avoids collisions. For our solution, we propose an end-to-end -end interpretable neural network. First, we use global pose information to align a single agent's observations to its current pose. Next, we use a convolutional recurrent neural network to predict future occupancy. Then we use another convolutional neural network to create a cost map from these occupancy forecasts. To determine the best course of action, we evaluate a set of trajectory samples against this cost map. These samples correspond to feasible vehicle maneuvers through the environment, based on the vehicle dynamics. The sample trajectories that avoid high cost regions of the cost map will have a more favorable score than those that don't. We select the minimum cost path as the trajectory to execute. Finally, we extend our single agent architecture to the connected vehicle scenario by exchanging and summing cost maps across multiple neighboring vehicles. To train this network, we use a cross entropy loss for perception and a max margin loss for planning. For our preliminary results, we highlight the performance of single agent perception and planning. Here, here we show a single testing instance from the dataset. The five frames on the left are the only inputs to the network. The five frames on the right are the segmentation masks used to train motion prediction for the network. Using our approach, we first predict occupancy likelihoods for each future time step. As you can see, the red coloring represents low likelihood for occupancy, and the blue and yellow coloring represents high likelihood. The neural network shows reasonable motion predictions for different actors in the scene. Next, using these occupancy forecasts, we predict a cost map. Finally, using this cost map, we score a set of feasible vehicle tra trajectories. Here we show the least cost trajectory sample. Thanks to the learned cost map, the chosen trajectory sample avoids collisions with road obstacles. In general, with increasing training iterations, we observe that our proposed approach is able to improve upon key metrics, such as reducing losses related to perception, limitation, and safety. For our final results, we plan to compare these same metrics across several baselines and model variants. Hello everyone, my name is Stanley Campazito, and I'll be presenting online adaptive learning in energy trading stack and work games with time coupling constraints. The problem consists of an aggregator, an energy type broker, and a number of customers called the prosumers. The purpose is to play a game so that energy can be submitted into the wholesale market as a bid. The prosumer I is maximizing a utility which consists of an income and a cost. The income is the price at which the aggregator will buy or sell the power times the actual demand. The demand is basically the originally scheduled demand that the prosumer had minus the new demand that the prosumer has. So the difference is the energy that the prosumer is willing to trade, whether that is positive or negative, because this is a framework that allows for bidirectional transactions. So in the case where the new demand is more than the originally scheduled, then this term here also becomes a cost because the prosumer is now willing to purchase energy from the aggregator. The second term is a cost, which is a dissatisfaction cost. And that is caused from any deviation from the original scheduling demand that the customer wanted to have. Multiplied by some UI, which is an elasticity parameter, customized for each one of the prosumers. The first constraint is a time coupling constraint, which basically says that the sum of all the new demands of the customer has to be equal to WUI, a parameter that the customer chooses. And any uh, demand at any time t from one to t capital, which is 24 for 24 hours, should not be negative, but also should not be greater than alpha times the original scheduling demand for that hour. Alpha is greater than one and allows for the consumer to purchase extra energy as compared to the originally scheduled one. And that is the flexibility of this framework. The aggregator, on the other hand, is making profit from the price difference, the price at which he submits to the market and the price at which he will buy or sell energy from the consumer times the total energy traded with the consumers. And that, that price PT can, of course, has to be positive and is bounded by some Pmax. The problem here is that the equilibrium cannot be found in closed form. After applying the KKT conditions to all the players, the KKT conditions are basically coupled, and we can only find a semi closed form for the best strategies of the players, the prosumers I and the aggregator P. So, what we propose here is that the aggregator is basically implementing some learning, and the originally NP hard game can, can now be solved using a function approximation. So the aggregator is basically learning the total demand of the customers so using some theta hat transpose phi and solving this list square problems. 
once he has an approximation of these best strategies, then basically he can solve his original problem, where instead of using D, he will use the D tilde, which basically comes from this problem here. And then the prosumers will continue to solve their original problems as passive followers. The problem here is that this least square problem we do not have data for. And that is, I mean, um, and what we have to do is basically solve a game online to start collecting the data. So this least squares problem now is transformed into a recursive least squares problem, which is solved by this algorithm. You might actually be able to recognize some of their like, recursive least squares equations in this online adaptive learning algorithm. The simulations we get for real world data from the California market show that the learning error actually goes to zero or asymptotically to a very low value. And then the player's payoffs actually converge as well. And the player's actions also converge. You can see that in some cases, the new demand can be lower or higher than the originally scheduled, which is the blue. And that means that our transactions can happen in both directions. Thank you for participating in this. Hello, everyone. My name is Chao Jie Wang. My presentation topic is incentive-based decentralized routing for connected and autonomous vehicles. Routing strategies based on dynamic traffic assignment have been proposed in the literature to optimize system performance. However, challenges have persisted in their deployment ability and effectiveness due to strong assumptions on travelers' behavior availability of network-level real-time traffic information, and the high computational burden. To address these gaps, this study proposes an incentive-based decentralized routing strategy to nudge the network performance closer to the system optimal for the context where all vehicles are connected and autonomous vehicles. The strategy consists of three stages. The first stage incorporates a local road switching dynamical system to, appro uh, to approximate the system optimal road flow in a local area based on vehicle's knowledge of local traffic information. This system is decentralized that circumvents the high computational burden associated with computing flows on the entire network. The second stage optimizes the road for each CAV by considering individual heterogeneity in traveler preferences to maximize the utility of all travelers in the local area. Constraints are also incorporated to ensure that these roads can achieve the approximated local system optimal flow in the first stage. The third stage leverages an expected MV-free incentive mechanism to ensure that travelers in the local area can accept the optimal roads determined in the second stage. This study analytically discusses the convergence of the local road switch and dynamical system. We also show that the proposed incentive mechanism is expected individual rational and budget balanced, which ensures that travelers are willing to participate and guarantee the balance between payments and compositions. Further, the conditions for the expected incentive countability of the incentive mechanism are analyzed and proved, ensuring behavioral honesty in disclosing information. We also conduct several numerical studies to illustrate convergence and expect an incentive compatibility properties. Overall, the proposed incentive-based decentralized routing strategy can enhance network performance and user satisfaction under fully connected and autonomous environments.